Hi there. Let's deal with the second thing that <clears throat> we want to learn about in topic four on oceans, and that is how tides work with oceans. <clears throat> Before we do that, though, let's review some of the things that we discussed earlier on in our last lesson in regards to oceans. Uh, we looked at ocean waves last time, and <clears throat> we should know the anatomy of longitudinal waves. So waves have crests and they have valleys and they go up and down in the ocean and this line represents, whoops, if it was straight, sort of what the ocean would look like if it's calm. So waves have a peak and they have a valley. The valleys are called troughs. Excuse me. <clears throat> the valleys are called troughs and the peaks are called crests. And so the difference between the distance between one top of the wave or crest and another, we call that the wavelength. And if we stood and counted how quickly a wave came past us one at a time, we could figure out the frequency. Uh, we should know how a breaker wave forms and so uh, when waves come to the shoreline what happens is they change their wavelength. So they have the same wavelength until they reach close to the shoreline and there's a backflow of water that comes down to create a much bigger breaker wave which surfers like to ride on. The steeper this slope, the higher the breaker waves usually are. Ah, we should know the anatomy or topography of the ocean and we should know that uh, as we go away from the continents to the continental shelf and the continental slope there are different depths within the ocean. We should know that ocean waves are formed by wind. And if we were to follow a wave, we'd notice that the water particles in a wave sort of stay put. And it's the energy of the waves that moves. Uh, let's talk about tides. Tides are pretty significant and they actually can be harmful or helpful to businessmen. Let's say a businessman hired us to build a, a dock maybe in this area of Vancouver Island and we want to determine how high to build the dock and so on. What would we need to consider? Well, let's zoom in to the area maybe that we want to build the dock. There we are, maybe right here. And here's the house of the businessman, and he wants you to build a dock right here. There are several other docks that are located along the shoreline already. One of the things that we'd obviously have to consider is something called the tidal range. As the water hits the shoreline, it's influenced by gravitational pull of the moon and less so but also of the sun and so if we build our dock too low it could get flooded thanks to tidal movements so how high up would the tide have to go we'd want to figure that out what's the maximum height that would pull the water towards the shoreline to cause a high tide or how low does the water get during low tides. So let's delve into understanding tides so that we can do a good job of building a dock. Here's a good image of how tides in a certain area will cause these boats to go up and then down, up and then down. So as you can see, the ocean water and its depth along the shoreline doesn't stay the same 
Tides then are a twice daily variation in the sea level caused primary by the gravitational pull of the moon and to a lesser extent the sun on the world's oceans. In some cases, the tidal range, which is the difference between low tide and high tide, we call that the tidal range, can be as much as 10 meters or more in certain areas. Now, here's our dock. If we build it a little too low from the shoreline, then obviously, as I said before, it could get flooded over top, and that's not a very good design for our dock. So what causes tides to change in the ocean? Well, as I said before, the Earth and the Moon are two great masses that have significant gravitational pull on each other. So believe it or not, the Moon has a gravitational pull on the Earth. And when the Moon goes around the Earth in this direction, as it does, it pulls the water gravitationally with it. And so when the Moon is along spots like this, it pulls the water creating high tides on two sides, believe it or not, on two sides. So you get water being bulged out this way and this way. So right there where I start, that would be a high tide and there'd be a high tide right here. And then where the water's being pulled, there's only a finite amount of water. So picture water being on a string. So when it's pulled, these spots right there would be low tide and there would be low tide along here. So low tides here, high tides here. But let's talk about how when the earth goes once, or when the moon goes once around the earth, it takes approximately 24 hours. So you'd think then that once it did one rotation, we'd get another new high tide again 24 hours later. But that's not the case. Let's talk about why. So let's start a clock, let's say here. So the moon right now is right there. The other thing you have to take into consideration is the Earth rotates on its axis like that. And that takes 12 hours, as I said before. But also, the Moon is rotating around the Earth at the same time. So, here's what happens. Here's our starting point. Let's move to this next picture. Here's, after eight hours, here's the man standing there. What have you noticed about what has happened to the moon after eight hours? It has moved slightly. Okay, so let's keep going. After 16 hours, here's the man. And the moon has moved a little bit more compared to our starting point, which was right here. Then after 24 hours, the man is back to the start, but the moon isn't at the starting line anymore. The moon has moved a little bit because it rotates. And so that's why it takes 12 hours and a bit, okay, 12 hours and approximately 24, 25 minutes. Okay, half of this figure. So here's sort of a graph of high tides and low tides. These top ones represent the number of high tides. These are high tides here on the graph, so about seven meters. And these are periods of low tide, one meter approximately. So how long, if we start here, how long before this is our first high tide, how long before we get a low tide? Well, about a little more than about 12 hours. And then how long before we get another high tide? About 24.4, so 24.4 hours. When is the next low tide? Another 12 hours and a bit and we get a low tide. And then another 12 hours and a bit and we get a high tide. So 
approximately every 12 hours and a little bit, every 12, 12 hours, we get low and then high tide. So it takes that long. Let's talk more because if we start to also consider not just the moon's pull, but also what impact our sun has, our sun can add to the pull of gravity. So in certain situations when the moon, earth, and sun are all in a line, what that can do is that can cause an extra pull or bulge of the water, creating not just a high tide, but an extra strong pull or an extra high tide. And so when we get Earth, Sun, Moon all lined up like this, we call that a spring tide. Spring meaning it is pulled extra high. So that's during full and new moon phases. So here's also a situation, whoops, where this can happen. So this time it's sun, earth, moon. So full and new moon get higher than average tides. However, sometimes we can get what's called neap tides. Neap tides are when the sun, earth, and moon are in 90 degrees from each other. So if the moon is here, or if we put the moon down here, and we get a 90 degree angle this way. So what that causes is extra low or lower than average low tides. So if you were standing right here, you'd have a neap tide because the, the water is being pulled a little more this way. So let's look at it again. So high and low tides, spring and neap tides. Let's talk about them. If the moon was here in its quarter phase, it would be pulling on the water like that. And the, the moon would be pulling a little bit, and we would get a neap tide. However, if, so what is being neaped? The high tide, so it would be lower than average. So normally you get a high tide, but if the, moon is pulling the water a little bit this way, there's our solar pull, then it wouldn't be quite as high. It would be a little lower. The high tide would be a little lower than average. Uh, but let's look at this situation where the sun, the earth, and the moon are in line. Now, normally you would get a high tide because the moon is right here and you're standing here, but you'd get an extra high, high tide because the sun is pulling also, so we call that a spring tide. Here it is again. So neap tide, which means if you're standing here, right there on the earth, normally your high tide would be about there. However, because the sun is pulling some of the water this way, it shows up right here, so it's neaped. Neaped means smaller than normal. This high tide here, if you were standing here, would be smaller than normal. And a spring tide would be bigger than normal. It's sprung up. So normally the high tide might be right about there, but because of the help of the gravitational pull of the sun, the high tide is extra high. We call that spring. Tidal power can help us, and some people are investigating the idea of using tidal power to help spin turbines to make energy. The Bay of Funday, for example, has huge tidal ranges, sometimes up to 16 meters. So this is low tide right now. The car is on this dock, and look at how low down the water is. Whereas the Bay of Funday, as you can see here, sometimes right there, 16 meters, 14 meters there. You can see this boat, okay, high tide, low tide. What a huge